Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our February 11th edition of Candid Coffee. This one is a special one, being that Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so I want to talk a bit about financial infidelity. As usual, if you guys have any questions, this is really meant, as the name implies, to be extremely candid. So go to the Q&A, ask questions. We'll try to get to them throughout our time together today. Um, obviously, if we don't get to something, we'll, we can address them one-on-one or uh, go to realinvestmentadvice.com. Go to ask a question. We'll make sure that we get uh, answer any and all questions that you may have. So uh, we are Clarity Financial doing business as RIA Advisors, a registered investment advisor with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, this is purely educational, really just to talk about some of the things that Rich and I have learned over the years uh, and seeing successful couples as far as how they, um, you know, how they monitor, how they, they move forward as far as finances go. I know this can be a, a struggle for many and really just kind of want to bring it down to earth and, you know, answer any questions you guys have, kind of share some tips that we've learned along the way. Um, so, Rich, I know you have spent a lot of time on this topic, and you have uh, we've got a lot of good information for you here today. What are some of the bigger things? I mean, we talk about financial infidelity, and this is really one of the bigger topics, and actually a big reason for a lot of divorces as well. Well, we know it when we meet with people who financially are out of sync, couples that are financially out of sync. Um, that there's a lot of strain. One might be a spender, one might be a saver, uh, too extreme. And it's, it's tough to, to create the bridge between people like that. So what we've noticed is the people who have the greatest financial synergy, the value of money are the ones that grow their wealth exponentially, actually. So. Even if one party is, say, stay at home party, and that party is consi- consistently discounting their role, uh, it's not true because it takes both parties to create that, that synergy. So you could have a higher earning spouse, lower earning spouse, but they're on the same page. And that means a lot. But again, this um, financial infidelity, um, you know, this is creditcards.com 32% of couples, US adults, have cheated on their partners financially. Uh, keeping secrets on cards, uh, a secret debt, uh, a savings account, a checking account. Um, obviously, Gen Zs and millennials tend to be uh, the worst, but obviously, baby boomers, every generation is responsible uh, for this. But I will just say it's never too late. Um, we're going to give you some effective and very simple methods to avoid or detect it, financial infidelity. And when you take these concepts to heart, you strengthen the bond uh, you both share. Um, you know, you embolden trust and over time, right? And then you improve your dialogue around positive money flow. And that's a collaboration. And that enhances your ability to, to willing partners, again, to meet and exceed their goals. So this is either a very known stumbling block or it's something invisible that you just can't put your finger on. There's something weird going on with the money that you can't just grasp. So... I'll give you yeah. some ideas on how to expose that and make it better. You know, so this 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 presentation is not designed to create a a decoupling. It's designed to forge a coupling um, between partners, whether you're living together or married or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It, it these tips work to help you both get on the same page. And I think this is really important because, you know, one thing that the stats show is that obviously the older you get, the better you get at this as far as, you know, working together. And a lot of this comes with maturity and age, but I think this is a great presentation for really any age group, um, just because, and, and probably even really a lot for the younger generations, because those are the people that typically struggle with it. They're trying to find their way. And really what it boils down to, I think in many cases, is just pure communication. But We'll start jumping and, into some of the, uh, the things. Yeah, that we and do I want I just want to help people understand. It doesn't mean somebody's doing per, something purposely either to hurt you. It's just they just may not know any better. Frankly, I've seen that. Oh, I didn't realize that, or you know, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I, I again, I have to help you understand it. Sometimes when people see financial infidelity, they think, oh, something shady is going on. No, sometimes it's just a bit of ignorance and going, oh, an awareness of your partner and what they would think, right? 
you got to put on your empathy shoes. For those who are sitting in, we're going to record this. I would make a plea to you. I dare to say that everybody on here today, this morning, if you're spending your Saturday morning and it looks like a pretty Saturday uh, doing this, you probably don't have to worry about this. But you have kids, you have grandkids, right, that are about to get married, right? We'll have this presentation up on YouTube. Please share it with them. Please show them, hey, this is something both of you as a new couple need to be aware of. And these are tips that I have shared with new couples about to get married. And they come to me and go, hey, Rich, what should I do? Uh, what, how should we look at things financially? And I think it's great that they're both open to it. So please share this presentation once it's ready for recording. Yep, I think that's, that's really important. And we're actually doing one uh, coming up called uh, what, Money Wise Kids. And really, if we could have put these together chronologically, that probably should have followed first because I think it starts at home when you're young. Many of these behaviors, these habits, if you see your parents talking about uh, finances, you get a good understanding. They have a healthy relationship sitting across the table, going through bills, understanding where funds are going. Um, you're probably set up for much greater success than those that don't see that. And unfortunately, I think as a society, we've gotten away from having those types of conversations at the kitchen table with the kids present, or even just them kind of kind of learning from osmosis and just hearing or seeing those conversations. So this is, uh, you know, maybe no fault of your own. And there are yeah. some of that, but, um, you know, I think it's, it's really important. So this is breaking it down. I mean, we talk about, you know, we go anywhere from talking about technical and fundamental analysis and markets to how we manage money. This is bringing it way down, you know, the behaviors we can control and some of these things that you may just not know you're doing. So what are those main steps, Rich, for avoiding financial infidelity? Well, we're going to break these all down, but there are five steps. Setting boundaries, practicing financial nudity, monthly money dates, stay observant. It's easier with this stuff. What I've realized is to hide in plain sight because nobody wants to think their partner is doing anything underhanded, right? Um, and they're probably not. It's just to be a bit, like I said, a bit of ignorance. Uh, spending is a symptom sometimes when you see this, but not the real problem. And I'm not a, I'm not Dr. Phil or anything like it. So you just might find that the spending, that's what I've found talking to people as I keep track, the spending is the symptom, but there's some underlying issue. Could be unhappiness, could be um, people that, you know, they're, they're feeling their age and they want to feel younger or they want to do things. And then three simple sentiments, the financial commitment. Again, these are really good for everybody, but especially for, you know, younger couples just starting out to, to, to look at this. I'm, I'm not even sure Dr. Phil's Dr. Phil anymore, Rich. I feel like he's more like Jerry Springer these days. Oh, is I he? I don't even watch TV and I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Seems to be the case, uh, yeah. Is, is he doing the uh, that's your baby kind of thing? Like, what's his name? Uh, yeah, I, I guess, so. you know, yeah. I don't know. Dr. Phil is no longer a doctor. So be... Listen, take it from Dr. Bill, because when those bills come in, someone's going to pay. Hey, I'm pretty good at this morning. Must right. be, I'm trying to think of what's in this coffee. Okay. You, so listen, you, like uh, I said, it's, it's a new coffee. <laughs> yeah. It's never too late. And these are simple methods. And like I said, it, they're there to strengthen the bonds that you have. It's not here to dissolve a relationship. It's here to bring things to the surface and make them better. Especially when people are just, again, they're just, you know, hey, I didn't think that was a big deal. I sent, uh, you know, all those Amazon boxes that are coming in. I don't, I, you know, I need stuff. Well, wait a minute. So, again, proving your dialogue, real important. And I think this is where the failure to communicate often is one of the bigger issues here is that there's no boundaries established. Nobody sets, uh, you know, from the get-go in a relationship as you're merging finances over time what that actually looks like. And we see yeah. a lot of people be extremely successful with this. And it's not all black and white. It's not cut and dry, right? There's a lot of gray area. And what works for one couple may not work for, for you and your partner. And I think that's really important to, to understand. And so when you're, you know, going down this path and trying to, you know, determine what works for you, something you may try doesn't work, but doesn't mean you should just give up and say, you know what, we can't do this. Yeah. They, that strategy may not work for you where, you know, you, you put everything together. It may be that you have um, a joint account, you have a personal account, your spouse has mm -hmm. a, another personal account, and you know exactly how much is going into each area and say, hey, you could spend some money here 
you know, this money in, in your account, this is for you to go, um, you know, go on trips, go, go buy gifts, do things that you want to do. Um, and the same would be in, in like, you know, if, like Michelle and I, what we do at our house, uh, these are funds that we do, but we still have parameters on them because that way nobody gets too out of control. So set a dollar amount. Um, what is it where you need to communicate before you go purchase it? Is it, is it a hundred bucks? Is it 200? Is it 500? Um, you know, with things getting more and more expensive, maybe you need to change that, that magic number. Um, this is something though, that, that needs to be done. You need to communicate about it. And one thing you and I, Rich, we've talked about in the past, if it's a big ticket item, we have a rule. You have to wait one week. Um, and what I find there's stuff that I think I, I, I need, then I really find out that I probably just wanted it. And usually within a week, I don't want it at all. Yeah. I mean, listen, the word boundary sounds bad. Like it sounds like I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm Travis, uh, you know, I'm Travis at the Alamo. I'm, I, I, it's not that deep and dire, you, but you do have to have boundaries that you all discuss, rules that you all discuss, and that creates that communication. Um, so they're not these deep, dark lines in a household budget. They're sort of gray, and you can come out of them, out, you know, ebb and flow out of them. It's just how per, the parameters, and I understand it, right? I know what I like to spend my money on. I love books. Right. I have a book problem. Uh, I do. I have a book problems. Terrible. Too. I, I have, um, you know, a pen and new notebook and computer. Problem. I've got a lot of problems. OK, so um, you got to make sure that um, your partner knows. And I will tell you, well, people with kids also need boundaries because you could have one parent that gives into their children and pays for everything and wants all this. You know, hey, my, I want this dog. Sure. Have it. I want this. Sure. Have it. Well, no, no, you've got to have to create boundaries around how you spend on your children and what you spend on. And, and, and we, we will have this great presentation on raising money smart kids at the end of the month that will talk about the benefits of delayed gratification for your children. Uh, we talk about the Stanford marshmallow experiment. Now I want a marshmallow. Um, so we're going to have a really great presentation um, about money smart kids and these are not your try these are not your tired rules either these are going to be so unique that things that we've learned so again boundaries you got to set them we're going to go t we'll show you on the next page on what some ideas i want you want to to do right it's the it's the crossing of these boundaries these breaches consistently that's where financial infidelity issues emerge and again it might be just the fact that i love books and all these new authors are writing stuff and i want to read them and people go and you know my significant other would go wait a minute wait whoa right so danny mentioned this agree upon your your guideline i'm giving you some ideas from what people have told me these are not empirically uh you know designed rules it could but be these have been done. This is achievable. These have been done. Right? Yeah, these I mean, have been done. Hundred dollars a month single activities and a joint budget for activities eight hundred and two hundred dollars a month, and then they give themselves breathing room. Twenty dollars, thirty dollars a month. If I'm, you know, I can buy lunch or whatever. I know that I'm going to breach some of these boundaries. So, but I know I have. Hey, and you said it, Danny. I got this joint account. I have maybe two separate accounts. Or I'm still within the joint account, but I know how much I want to spend. I'm keeping track. And if, I, if I'm going to spend something above that limit, so say I have $100 a month limit and I'm going to spend $200, do not ignore that. Don't say, well, I'm not going to do it because I have a boundary. Talk to your significant other. Disclose it. Hey, you know, like this is this first edition book and this author is not going to do this again. I'm just, you know, or this special thing I would like to have for the garden. You okay with that? It's going to cost an extra hundred bucks, you know? Okay. Just disclose and discuss. Disclose and discuss. Disclose and discuss. And if, you, if, you, if your significant other gets pissed at you for always talking about it, say, how dare you? Like Greta would, how dare you? and say, I, we need to tell each other these things. Because sometimes I have spouses that are very open and they want to tell their other spouse, the other spouse goes, oh, I don't care. No, you should care. You should care that that person is willing to tell you and you should be cognizant of where your money goes. So that's no excuse. 
So disclose and discuss. I'm gonna see if I can fit Greta into this more often. Okay. Oh right. no, we need to leave Greta and Yellen and everybody else at home. <laughs> everybody else. So the boundaries, good thing. Boundaries is a good word. Next, practice financial nudity. So Danny and I re recommend swapping in a marriage. Credit report swapping. You get it, right? You list, credit reports are great. They're going to list all your accounts from past to present. And they're going to show, you know, loans you've had in the past. It's, it's the ultimate, purest form of financial vulnerability. And you can get yours free at annualcreditreport.com. So part of your annual checkup, this is a great time of year to do it, first quarter. Um, you both pull up your credit reports, right? Look at the information. Swap. See how things look. I had one wife that caught something on her husband's credit report. He looked at it and thought it was fine. She goes, wait a minute, what's this? This account says you're in good standing, but we don't have this account. And he looks and goes, I don't have this account. It, it was it was someone else's account and he, it was it wasn't a fraud, but it was the guy had the same name and his social security number was off like by two. And that wasn't him. So she caught wow. it, even though it wasn't you know, anything sneaky, and it wasn't fraud, it was just some weird thing. So sometimes a different set of eyes when you credit swap is really helpful, uh, Danny. So I have some kids, some adult children that'll do this with their, um, go have their uh, parents look at their credit report. Do you see anything, Dad, that looks weird? I mean, that looks fine to me, but do you see anything? You know, so this Financial nudity and using your credit report, very important. And don't fall for any of the, oh, well, you know, you can pay and get this for this. And, you know, the credit reports you can pay, you pay for, you don't have to do that. You're able to get your annual credit report. It gives you a nice history of everything. And this should, you should do this once a year. Like you maybe go for a physical. This is something you both should do as partners. And you can actually do this a little more frequently. So at annualcreditreport.com, you can go and check. So... Basically, you could stagger it where every four months, so three main uh, credit yeah. bureaus, you know, Equifax, TransUnion, and, uh, oh, shoot. You it could. eluded me. Um, I don't think experience. anybody's going to do uh, it. I don't think anybody's going to do it. And I, I as long well, as I not, think, you know, maybe you are because you're so anal. There are people that will, though. But if you really, you really want to get into it, I mean, you could check each one, stagger it out four months. I mean, the beauty of this is, like, I do a lot of it on, on the calendar, Rich, like, on mm -hmm. my phone. So that any mm -hmm. financial stuff like, oh, hey, I bonds are uh, at a year today or, mm -hmm. hey, remind you, go check your annual credit report again or go do this. Um, you know, something's maturing. That's a great way that you can do this as a reminder. I think it keeps the top of mind. And then you can go check that. You can check it for free. You just check a different one each time and you can do that once a year. But so technically you could do it three times a year. So set it up for every four months. If you want rolling, to. You can keep an eye on it. Now, another thing that I know you, we've talked about before, Rich, was um, a lot of these credit card companies and banks will provide you with, like, uh, Chase has Credit Journey. Wells Fargo has something real similar. I think even B of A has that. A lot of the big institutions do. And some of the smaller ones are getting, getting much better at that as well, where they'll give you notifications if something shows up on your credit report. Um, they'll also, you know, you can pull it from there. And so there's other ways to go about this. But just keeping it top of mind, having those conversations around it, I think is extremely important. Yeah, keep in mind, your credit score is different from your credit report. Your credit score can give you some idea if something's a little strange, uh, if your number falls off and you don't recognize it, but they are different. The credit score is, is behavior. <laughs> credit report is your credit history. So think of um, your credit score as a blood test and your credit report as a DNA, like ancestry, right? Um, that's how you got to look at it. But all important. I'm not saying credit score isn't. Um, now, to Danny's Correct. point, I, I think four months is excessive, but I think where it would fit if there are elements of financial infidelity. So if you both agree that, yes, some one of you or both of you have strayed uh, financially, then yes then I would increase the, um, um, you know, the, the increase the, uh, the study of these reports. But if everything is fine, then I think once a year, but you'll know like, hey, you know what? I just, I've had instances with my spouse in the past, so we're gonna do this 
we're going to rotate it like Danny says. Put it on your calendar, set it up in a task, real easy on an iPhone. I don't know how it works on an Android. I would think it's the same and get it set up. Works easy. Hey, Rich, want to do a quick break real quick. So we did talk about the Money Wise Kids. That uh, webinar is going to be on February 23rd. That's another one I think is really good for uh, people starting families. Um, you know, really any age, I don't think it's as long as you have children, this can be something that we're going to, we put together a lot of good information. Rich spent a ton of time on this to make sure that we're really encompassing, you know, different age groups and, and how we would go about. And even some things that he did with, with his daughter and that I do with, with our kids to kind of give you guys some ideas as far as that communication aspect. Talk about holding monthly dates. You know, this is one of the harder parts, especially uh, Michelle and I struggle with this in the sense that, you know, Every day we have something with the kids and, and really being deliberate about this is so important for us. And I think that we do a much better job as a couple by scheduling time together. And just in general, it's awful nice, but uh, also spending time to discuss the, the finances. Yeah, I mean, my friend and fellow certified financial planner, Brittany Castro, uh, encourages couples to do this. And I really thought it was a good idea. And this is just the monthly regular date night, but with money, with statements. Um, that's your scheduled time together to review your credit card, your banking statements. It's a simple, very effective exercise in trust and mutual respect. Um, also, it does help what I've noticed um, in these money dates, because I ask people, hey, what'd you all do? Like, well, how'd it turn out? They also talk about aspirations for their money and the future and things that they have let go. Uh, we don't, you know, we've talked about we're not having enough life insurance or, um, you know, we wanted to always take this trip and let's talk about that now. So um, they're, um, you know, th 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 these are good. These are safe. And I, and I want to stress, these are safe spaces. And, and it gets you a chance to regroup on your mutual financial goals, the checks and balances on your recreational spending, um, planning for vacation, um, things you can do better you know, hey, I observed this. I think we can save a little bit more. You know, the SECURE Act came out. Rich talked to me about that. I just had this conversation with some the other day. And I can do more in a Roth if you do this. And, and, and these are, you know, I, I can do it in passing, but you're not going to listen because you got the day-to-day. -day. But if I could set aside some time. And again, it doesn't mean you have to have your statements and credit cards all the time. I have people that have more informal money dates. So they just get together with pen and paper and they go through these aspirations of um, things they want to do over the next two to five years. And I think it, it fosters a bond. I mean, I think it's really... No, it, it does. Uh, it so. does foster a huge bond. And I, I think that's a, a great point in the sense that it doesn't have to be you going out to eat and having or, or going to the park or just no. even, I know sometimes for us, it's just sitting in the car and in a quiet space and having a conversation. But it doesn't have to be where you have every statement, you're scouring over it, you know, performing a full financial audit on everything that you're doing. But mm -hmm. it could be, hey, this month, you know, our goals were to save X amount. We, we did a little bit better than we anticipated. Or, you know what, we had uh, the AC went out at the house, the car broke down. And man, this month was terrible from me reaching a goal perspective on that. We were able to put some funds aside, but we had to spend some out of the emergency fund. So we took a little bit of a step back. That's to be expected. That's going to happen, right? Can't get you down talk on about it. Life. You all talk it. about it. You talk about it. You agree about it. You agree on it. And, and what it does is it fosters, I think, these, these feelings of teamwork. Like you're all part of a big, bigger thing, like a family, right? And, you know, you, you had this, this, even if it was a frustration, like, yeah, I'm frustrated too. And I am. Yeah. Hey, Danny, you want to go in the back seat of the car? You know, I mean, these kinds of things where I think it creates it's more than money. I think that happens from these money days. I think it's just good teamwork and uh, open vulnerability of communication that uh, is important. Not that I'm like any well, kind of relationship expert, but I'm just saying is, I mean, it's, I notice it seems to work. Well, we should have had a, a relationship expert on today. I thought about that this morning as I was driving in. Uh, oh. You know, as many people as we know in that space, that probably would have been a good Kind of, that could uh, have been. Well, listen, start. maybe we find somebody that's really good at this, an expert, and we bring them on for one of them. It would be nice to have, uh, see, look, as Danny and I are having like a money candy coffee date right now in front of you all. 
uh, it would be nice to have, say, some experts in these fields that deal with people day to day on this and come in and share some views. If they want to get up on a Saturday morning and join us, that would be great. This does foster a better relationship. I can I can tell you personally, when we spend time on these things, as much as it's kind of like, oh, man, it's, it, you know, I think a lot of people feel like this is a chore. Yeah. And for us, and like in our life, like our stage right now, we're extremely just crazy with the kids. And so it's even good just to have these conversations because it's very easy for her to just like, I say, listen, you, you've got to make decisions. You got to do some of these things quickly and I'm okay with it. But at the end of the day, it, it's, I think it also helps to know that I have her back in the sense that, okay, we talked about this. I gave you a little bit of, uh, you know, and, and not to say I'm giving her the ability. She can do what she wants, right? But we do this together that she can make these decisions. She knows that I'm not going to come after her and be like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Look, this is how we did it. But the beauty of it is we can circle back together and say, okay, here's, here's what I did. Here's why. Here's what's going on. You were busy. I'm sorry I made this decision. You know what? You're right. I know we tried to talk about it. We're talking about it now. All right. Anything else we need to change that we're doing for the moment? And yeah. I think that that helps us tremendously. And I think it also breeds mutual respect. Look, I know we can all be selfish, and I'm, I'm guilty of it, too, where I just want to go. There's things that I want to go do. But if you have that mutual respect, you make, make your partner feel that much better, right? You chose that person for a reason. And uh, I think sometimes we forget about that, especially when it comes down to, to spending money, because we always just say, well, I've been, I'm working. I want to do what I want to do with it. Um, that's not how it should go. At least you're doing it. I mean, again, there are a lot of people that may not be doing it. Uh, so I think that's yeah, important. Yeah, who knows if it's right. But yeah. Talk about being, a, being observant, Rich, because I think this is, this is one of the things that I'm not sure that everybody has to be, uh, you know, you don't have to be on guard, per se. And I think that it's a couple yeah. of really easy to get defensive or you feel like your spouse is coming after you a little bit, but you know, my, my problem is books as well. We're I'm in the office and we did the last one in the office. At least I did because uh, my bookshelf in my office is being gutted. Talk about trust your gut. Um, it's, you know, we had, had a leak, had some problems. So all my books, everything is out. And Michelle's like, do you still need all these books? Why can't we get rid of these books? Like, yeah, heck yeah. I need these books. I mean, you know how much stuff I, I go back to and, Sometimes reread and she's like, why do you keep getting more books? And I'm like, well, because there's new stuff. We got to, you know, we're always learning and trying to stay ahead of stuff. And, uh, you know, that is probably my, my bigger vice. But for many people, especially if there has been that financial infidelity, it's just being observant. It's just watching, monitoring. Has anything changed? Uh, Rich, you make some good points. Like, where did all these new clothes come from? What about this jewelry? Um, is it a big deal? Maybe it's right within the boundaries that you guys have set and it's no big deal. Uh, but maybe it starts getting a little bit of excessive over time. And that's where you got to make sure that, you know, if you're having those meetings, did, are we, do we meet our goals? No. Okay. Well, Hey, I noticed a couple of things. Is this maybe one of the reasons that's a tough one, man. I think it is. I think you got to be like a little like Columbo. Uh, one more thing. You know, you got to be observant and, and realize some of this stuff really hides in plain sight because no one's maybe be trying to hide anything from you. So you got to like, you know, and then there's these couples that I know have money problems and they overlook each other's um, issues like this because they don't want to get into in a conflict or they don't want to really maybe understand that there are deeper relationship issues. Like I had said, spending sometimes is a symptom, which is the next uh, slide we'll get into. So you got to have like sort of a detective like mindset, you know, the new clothes, the jewelry, how many pairs of new shoes? Uh, is there a new hobby developing? Maybe a great hobby, maybe photography or golf, but how much are you actually spending on this stuff? Uh, how many Amazon boxes do I say? Check your garbage cans. I did have one woman check her garbage cans because, oh gosh, my husband spends a lot on golf and he said he wasn't going to get these clubs. I said, well, I said, they come in a box, don't they? She goes, yeah, I don't know, I guess. I said, okay, well, go out and check your garbage cans in the garage. <laughs> she found all these boxes. So I'm just saying, you know, I don't want you to go and dig into your garbage. I just want you to understand that. Now, observation that you go, hmm, yeah, you know, nah, let me discount that. Don't discount it. You trust your gut. And again, it doesn't mean it's underhanded. It doesn't mean that something nefarious is going on. It just means that, wait a minute, something's going on here that doesn't seem right. 
here's a guy that never bought shoes and now he's got like 30 pairs. What is what that about? You know, just what, why is that? You know, it's okay. It's okay. Trust your gut. You're not coming at it from an area of hate or, you know, questioning something. Um, you know, I had, you're going to laugh. I had one couple, the reason I bring up the shoes, I did have one couple who did, her husband was buying all these shoes. Just like, he never cared about his shoes. Like, I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. I said, she goes, you think he's cheating? I'm like, because he's buying shoes? No. I mean, I don't know, but I would say no. I said, maybe you've got a foot issue. She goes, what? She goes, maybe, maybe there's something wrong. Like, he can't figure it out. He thinks new shoes will correct an issue. And that's what it was. He had some issues and he, it was, like I said, there was something underneath the surface. He was finding more comfortable shoes because he was in pain and he was doing this trial and error thing without addressing the problem. So, I mean, that's something trivial, right? But look what happened. She's like, that's what it was. He had a foot problem. And uh, we went and got it corrected. We got these special uh, inserts. And, you know, now he's back to normal and not needing all these shoes. As a matter of fact, he had something sent back. So, you see? He didn't want to face the fact that maybe instead of the shoes, he should actually get the problem fixed. Sometimes you're that person that nudges that person. So this is a positive, Danny. This is not a negative um, to stay observant. Now, sometimes it is negative. Sometimes there are issues. But for the most part, it's probably not. It's probably something else. And you've helped your partner tremendously realize something that they didn't realize themselves because they're too close to it. Well, just that goes back to the communication aspect. You just have to communicate. Yeah, and, you know, I will tell you, guys are not as good at it. Like, they're not good at, like, a lot of times, and I hate to generalize, but there are a lot of guys that are not good at, like, I've got a problem with my elbow, I'm just going to wait. You know, they'll let it get worse, and then I'll go to the doctor, right? I might get all kinds of stuff to try to help it, but the last thing we want to do is go to the doctor. So, but again, this is way to stay observant. Stay observant, trust your gut. You know, we talk about... Yeah all these yeah. different aspects of it, but spending is, is a symptom. It's not always the real issue. Right. And so mm -hmm. looking beyond, it's not, sometimes it's not just, you know, we don't just spend the spin for a lot of people. That's the stress reliever. It is uh, maybe there's something going on that's much deeper. This is where I think we could use somebody with uh, <laughs> maybe a couple more credentials behind their name and a little bit more experience in this area, even though sometimes I think, you know, you could say, you know, you, you need a, a, a degree in behavioral finance, or psychology for what we do at times. But listen, a lot of times it is job strain. It's depression. Mm -hmm. It is physical health issues, marital issues. I mean, these are all, you know, problems with the kids. So many people use that as a stress, you know, outlet and where they go and they spend. And what we see, unfortunately, though, is that, you know, it's uh, bad behaviors breed bad behaviors. And once you start kind of pulling the yarn, so to speak, it's a heck of a lot easier to begin. So, you know what? I'll, I'll go ahead. Well, I did this. You know, I'll go ahead and do this too, or I'll go ahead and buy this. And a lot of times that just can begins to compound and then it makes the problem really bad, especially if you're not having regular communication about this. And so, um, you know, the emotional side of this is tied to money in many ways. And it may just be that, you know, this is why held, holding each other accountable is extremely important. Um, making sure that you are communicating clearly. And so if there is an issue, you know, try to find something else that's an outlet um, that helps the two of you. And a lot of times, once you start to have those conversations, some of these other things will begin to, to disappear as well. Well, spending is something that's weird. That's innate to Americans and consumerism. And it, there are studies out there that spending releases endorphins and dopamine. You feel good when you buy something you it like. It just makes me mad. I don't like spending. <laughs> Say I you're, don't. You're weird. But oh, I'm man. For, a lot, for a lot of people, though, I mean, I don't get a big thrill out of spending unless like I buy something that, you know, like I'm excited to get a new book, but that is dopamine. I mean, whatever you like to buy, you're going to get some sort of rush of something that makes you feel better. When it's excessive, then you know that there's something behind it. Um, and I saw a lot of this during the financial crisis, I will tell you. I saw a lot of the job strain and depression. I mean, after it was sort of over, there were a lot of people that lingered in um, spending. 
um, as an unhealthy stress relief because of the devastation of it. You ironically, you may not want to spend, but you do because you're like, well, look, you know, I don't care. I mean, then we bail out taxpayers. We do all this stuff. I'm angry. I mean, a lot of stuff. And, and we saw it after the pandemic, Danny. Was spending the real issue or was it revenge? Like, how dare you lock me up for all this? How dare you lock me up for all these times? I, I'm going to take that revenge vacation. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care. So we saw a lot of this. We still see some lingering of that uh, spending as a symptom and not the real issue that you close the economy and lock me up. So you're seeing it right now in the yeah. economy in these post-pandemic uh, spending habits that we've seen. No, you certainly are. I think a lot of spending habits have changed. And, you know, uh, we kind of, uh, we, we, you and I joke occasionally on, you know, the struggle that, you know, everything's at the tip of your fingers now. I mean, it used to be that you had to actually think about buying something. You'd have to physically get in the car, make the drive, you know, think about all the other costs and time associated with it. Um, and then even with the, even on the internet, it was, you know, it's just, there's still some hurdles over time. But now, I mean, with Apple Pay, with Amazon, with all of the ways that you can purchase things, and heck, you don't even need, you know, your credit card. They store it right here. Boom. You purchase something. I mean, just like that. And so that's where, you know, I think it's tough not to mention everybody has that, uh, you know, you're always, you always see something that you want. Now it's just determining is it something you actually need. And I think that's the, the issue, especially when it's been thrown in our face time and time again, either via email, on the, you know, billboards, signs, television. I mean, there's not much you can, you can, there's not a really easy way to get away from any of that stuff. Unless you get rid of the phone, you go out to the country. That seems to be about it. Yeah, I'm surprised we're not spending um, more because it's so damn darn easy to, 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 I mean, I could walk from our office to the bathroom and I can order like 30 books if I wanted to just on my phone. Yeah. So, really yeah, I agree. You, you know, and then throw in the fact that, you know, you had me locked up for about months and now I, you know, I missed the vacation and I miss going out to eat and I missed all this stuff and I don't care if I have the money or not, I'm going to do it. So I'm seeing post pandemic spending causing some strain between couples because one says, well, Hey, we got to slow it down. You're like, no, I'm not. Cause I know what could happen. And there could be another pandemic coming and, you know, all this crazy stuff. So I'm saying is that th there's some post pandemic behavior that look, we look at it in our office. It's hard to understand what's going on sometimes uh, with the labor markets and all kinds of things. So just keep that in mind. And then there's three sentiments. Yeah, hey, do you want to give away real quick? Oh, yeah. One give more mug. mug. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stephanie and David King, thank you for joining. Uh, we'll get a mug sent out to you guys as well. We'll reach out to get your address. Um, but let's, uh, let's, uh, let's move on here. So talk a little bit about you, me, and both. Now, I'm going to say something. You and it's going to sound, it's going to, and, I, and I'm going to embarrass Stephanie right now. But Stephanie and David are probably some of the best couples I've seen that talk about money and, and have these, do everything that stuff together. They're on the same page. I mean, love, love seeing that. And uh, they do a great job of keeping their financial household in order. So great job. I'm glad you got the mug. So this is uh, you, me, and both. And I think this is more for couples just starting out, I think. Uh, I know it sounds corny, right? It sounds like some sort of John Hughes movie from the 80s, uh, except you have big hair and bad makeup. But, um, you know, you can even think about this silently, but is as my partner, you're going to promise to ask my input for financial commitments that breach our agreed upon boundaries, right? You know, and you don't have to say it just like that because you sound like you're out of a Shakespearean novel or something. You just want to say, listen, I, I promise, you know, you promise that you're going to, Make sure that you follow these rules and tell me. But as my, as your, you know, as your partner, I promise to share my financial matters with you. And as a couple, we're going to respect our money philosophy. We're going to create one. We're going to share the financial documents. We're going to hold the money date. We're going to work, save, and invest together and meet our milestones. That's what we are supposed to do together. Not only that for us, but to be a very good example for our children and a great example for our grandchildren when they come. So these are, doesn't have to be 
sentiments that you're going to sit and pour your heart out over a table uh, or at a restaurant, but the sentiments there, right? You can, you, this is what you want. And we gave you the steps to, to take advantage of that. I know we kind of went through, and this was probably a little bit more, um, you know, relationship therapy and finance than, than what we typically do, but just really thought this was a great topic to kind of broach, especially around Valentine's Day when everyone's thinking about, uh, you know, the, the fantastic holiday that is coming up that I know Rich looks forward to each and every year. Um, you know, that's where you should, that's where you should talk about setting boundaries, Rich, is around Valentine's Day and spending around that. You keep a ledger? Boy. No, but I plan it out. Like these guys that are running, walking around like ATB and Kroger's lost buying flowers, you know, I mean, really? Uh, so it's, like, it's sort of funny. Um, you know, okay, I got to get her flowers, you know. Well, no, maybe not. So, no, I don't budget for it because I just do some nice small things and go out for dinner kind of thing. Um, it's, but those are ad behaviors that I tend to try to do with your partner. In other words, if you're doing these things with your partners all year, Valentine's Day is just another day. If you, you know, you mess up a lot, you got to get home, go, you know, overspend on flowers. I love those kiosks, kiosks that Kroger sets up in the parking lot. Oh, man. It's I'm not going to listen, I'm not doing there. that. I'm a planner. I got this junk planned out. All right. So it's all good. Um, yeah, so, I do stuff throughout the year. I'm not, I'm not spending a hundred bucks on flowers. I get to $5 on, on a regular day. Well, no, yeah. you can't do that these days. Seems like got a little more expensive, yeah, but, but I mean, you know, not so bad. Mean. Yeah, heck. So, but this is but, where you probably, gentlemen, you probably really want to communicate because you could get get a lot of trouble if uh, your significant other thinks that. Hey, I got an idea. Uh, it's a big deal on Valentine's Day, and you say, "Yeah, oh, well, we do this all year long." That's here's where this could get you a lot of trouble. So don't listen well, to me on this one. I can tell no, you. No, but here's a great one for I, the guys that are late on the Valentine's Day. Listen, honey. Rich Rosso and Danny Ratliff said that maybe we should have a money date. That means we don't spend money. We're going to talk about it. So you don't have to bring any gifts. You just have the money date. How do you think that'll work? Well, hey, guys, if you do have any, any questions, you know, don't, don't hesitate to jump on. We're going to spend a couple more minutes just kind of tying up loose ends here. Um, you know, we do appreciate y'all's time. Tell us topics you guys want to hear about. I mean, we're, you know, clearly we're, we're willing to address and discuss just about anything. We are, you know, we talked about we are RA advisors. We are a fiduciary registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And what that means is that we cannot have conflicts of interest. Um, you know, people hire us for our experience. What we do as far as, you know, financial planning, money management, um, you know, it broaches all things financial. Um, and so we look to be, you know, people's financial partners. So we do have a little bit different strategy than most from uh, money management. We're more of a a buy, hold, monitor, and sell type strategy, or as Rich says, buy, hold, and watch. Uh, we don't just, you know, set it and forget it. We are active. We do look to mitigate risk. And then, you know, participate to the upside when markets are doing well. So we are very risk-oriented in that manner. Um, we do employ uh, several certified financial planners, uh, charter financial analysts here in-house. Uh, we do cover a lot of different topics within our financial planning. Uh, this is not financial planning light. We do discuss, you know, Social Security in great depth, Medicare. How do you take distributions in retirement? And if you're not in retirement, where are you putting funds now? Are you taking advantage of all of your uh, employer benefits? If you're a small business, do you have all the plans set up properly? I mean, we can go on and on about all the different things that we look at when looking at financial planning. But if you have questions, go to realinvestmentadvice.com. Also on the survey, if you would like an advisor to reach out to you, we'd love to have somebody uh, – reach out or your client, you just have a question or want to talk, email us. You can also go through there and just say, Hey, give me a ring. We're happy to, to sit down and discuss uh, anytime. Always enjoy catching up and uh, making sure that, you know, we're communicating well. Just enjoy your weekend. And we really so appreciate that. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning, please share it with your children and your adult children starting out. And we have just heard a lot of great stories from clients of their adult children, young adult children getting engaged and, you know, hitting financial milestones, new jobs. So, so cool to hear it and great to hear it. This is very helpful to them. Uh, and of course, they have questions. They can reach out to me. We're happy to help. 
uh, all the kids, uh, as well as Danny. And um, yeah. it's really great if you're, you have grandchildren, uh, pair, your, your children have kids, uh, have them sit in on it, um, have them sign up, just spend a Saturday with us for an hour. They'll get some great tips, great books to read, great um, board games that I recommend that I've used with my daughter, Haley, uh, and um, different uh, save, share, spend ideas. These are things, these are not, you know, I see so much advice. I try to make it original for situations that clients and I and Danny have gone through and that have worked. So sit in, have your kids with their kids when they have to, have to sit in or they're planning for children, uh, have them sit in. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it and they'll enjoy it. Do us a favor. If you have a tip that works really well for you and your spouse, yeah, let us know. We'll talk about this on the show Friday. And so if there's any tips that you are using that um, really works uh, and that you, or, you know, something I didn't cover, please share it. And we'll share it on the radio on our Financial Fitness Friday show. So we appreciate y'all being here. Hey, thanks, guys. We appreciate your time. Have a great weekend. We'll see y'all next week.